On the painting table today we have some Death Guard Plague Marines. Now these are using the Heroes Series 3 models, plus one to give us a Nurgle Squad of 7. I have rebased them, they come on really nice scenic bases, but I want the whole army to match and blend together. Um, and I will do a basing video showing you what I've done and kind of why uh, later on, so look out for that when it comes. I've sprayed black and then a Retributor Armor spray over the top. And then stage one for us is now to use the Death Guard green to bring that armor back to the color we want it. Uh, any paints I use and everything will be fully in the description down below. So if you do want to take an exact copy of what I've done, uh, you can do. So why spray Retributor and not just spray Death Guard green? A couple of reasons. Firstly, timing. I think it's quicker to go green over the Retributor than it is to put brass over the green because there's lots and lots of fiddly little black brass areas that will take a lot of time to to pick up as well but also i think second reason is a lot of these colors will work better being put over a metallic base coat than they will over a green base coat metallic base coats i think um, where the highlight layers are the color shines through better makes it a little bit brighter and it gives you a multi-tone effect better personal choice i also think it means we can leave areas when we're painting on the armor gaps and various other things and it'll mean it'll look like a rust effect when we ink it up later which works really well for death guard so personal choice so the green's done um, i've showed you on clotigus the banner bearer but we will bounce out in and out of the other models as we go now we're doing a bone layer now when we're painting the bone i think it's quite important to go from the base of the bone right to the tip of the bone and put your brush strokes in line it makes it look more realistic, more natural. Most of the other stuff, you can just, brush strokes can be all over the place. It doesn't matter because if the brush strokes do show, and they don't always, it doesn't matter because it's it's armor or it's skin or it's whatever. But I think with a bone, it certainly seems to help in my opinion. Next, we're doing some Rakar flesh. And we're doing this on the tentacles, uh, any skin that's showing, and we'll also put it on the nurgling. So a bit of point on tentacles. Now we're gonna do a little bit of wet blending. So we've done the tentacles from the base where the armor is halfway down in the rakar flesh and now we're taking a screamer pink from that halfway point to the end of the tentacle and then before the screamer pink dries properly get some rakar flesh back on your bush and paint this over that kind of area where that uh, tentacle pink is still going to be wet and kind of smudge <laughs> technical effect uh, smudge the two colors together uh, and you'll find it comes brighter pink at the base of the tentacle darker pink at the end of the tentacle where you've got that screamer pink and then you can always put some more screamer pink back in and you'll get a merged effect between what is now three colors so that's a very quick five second uh, wet blend keeping the screamer pink going onto the little snaky nurgling that's on there um, and then once it had dried a bit i put some screamer pink on any pustules at the base of the tentacle and some rakar flesh on pustules at the end of the tentacle and you can see there it looks like there's now three or four colors uh, on that tentacle fairly quick effect moving on to the leather on these models so we've used i've just used some flat brown and we're picking out the straps on the banner poles you know the straps on the handles of the swords any pouches uh, leathery bits on there just to go through You could use whatever colour you like here. Now I'm choosing to use a purple onto the cloth, just because I like the colour. I think it'll match and merge well with the colours we've already used. It's quite a natural colour and it will go there, but you could use any colour you like. So we've done the, the, all the cloth on all the models in that kind of purple colour. And initially when I was starting the army, I was going to use purple on the tentacles. So you know you can vary these models quite easily. Doing a bit of gun metal now. I'm picking out some of the details uh, on the metallics that I didn't want to leave with brass. Now I've chosen to do the actual poles I've done the swords um, and i've picked out some others but you can pick out as much or as little of the detail as you want any areas you leave obviously it will look like a brass effect I'm talking about brush strokes as i mentioned before you can see here when i'm painting the the handle of the pole i'm just brushes going in all directions all over the place and that's what i mean sometimes it's not uh, just about uh, your thin coats and your detail it's about how you use the brush can have an impact on your final painted effect so now on some detail work uh, you see I've put four more colors on the palette there and I'm going around and just choosing what colours we're going to use on these models. So I'm choosing to do the handles of the bolt guns in a black. You could leave them met metallic, it's up to you. Eye lenses, I'm just picking out Clotticus' is one here in blue. But I do do a couple of those, I do one of them yellow I think. And, and just move, see what takes my fancy on the models as I'm going. And that is again a beauty of Death Guard, we're not looking for uniformity necessarily. So we see here on the unit champion, I'm just choosing to shoot to his gun black, so the gun casing. And the sword black and you can see there on his shoulder pad i've used rakar flesh on that kind of demonic face that's growing out so again we can do some varying options so on the uh, more slug the 
flamethrower-y type guy, not a flamethrower, you know what I mean, um, using yellow on all the pustules, and I'm also using that same yellow on any of the gaps and cracks in the armour where it looks like, you know, the eye core uh, is, is oozing out of the armour gaps, and we're going to do um, some Nurgle's Rot on this later, just using that yellow as a base colour. Other thing I've done is the crystals that grow out of that Moor Slug uh, with the Plague Spewer model. I've done his crystals blue, and I've done some red on the grenades of um, the character I've just shown you there. Colorous as he is. So back to um, our main model. Now it's an ink wash stage, so I'm using a Vallejo sepia wash. Well, you can use whatever wash you like, but I think this has a nice, dirty, uh, mucky effect, and you'll see a lot of videos I use this quite a lot. If you put too much on, you see there, you just dab it off on a bit of paper, keep the dry brushing on there. Nice thick layer, leave it to dry overnight or for a few hours, and you can see the effect we've got on the models here. Now actually you could stop at this stage, um, and if you were doing a battle ready army, or if you just wanted to get everything done to a certain level to play a game, you could perfectly stop here and there'll be no problem. What we're going to do now is go back over all the colours we've already used using the same techniques we've already used, and it brings the model to life a bit more because you've got on the model now probably two, three colors with the base tones and some of the washes in there. Now going back over with every single color just adds uh, another level of vibrancy to the model, um, brings it to life more. What we're not doing is covering every inch of every color. And you see here on the Death Guard green, I'm leaving quite a, a large area around the outside into the crevices. So we don't wanna leave the flat air, the, the raised areas in bright color, we leave the crevices. Probably 80% of the, the model is covered and we leave it all in the darker areas. So that's almost done, just showing you what I've done on some of the rest there. And I'm really happy and really pleased with the effect. And again, we could stop here, but now we're doing a bit of detail on the uh, brass areas and the armor, because all we've done on the brass areas so far is the initial retributor spray and the wash, and it looks really effective. But I want to just bring it up on, on the armor, particularly uh, the armor on the model, not necessarily on the banner poles and things. So I'm using the Retributor and we're just doing a very bit of edge highlighting just on the edges where the light would catch um, and really not covering much of this uh, armour at all, just the very edge. Then I've taken some Nylac Oxide, which is one of Workshop's technical paints. Now what this is, this is to make uh, aged brass effects. So, you know, your brass doesn't rust. What brass does is, is you know, oxidises. So I'm using it just on... Uh, the rivets and any any detail uh, areas not on the flat panels and a couple of bits I feel like I put too much on so just again dry the brush off and then take it back off and it gives a really nice aged uh, oxidized brass effect so I uh, did that across all the models and then I'm using three different uh, washes or technical paints a bit of Nurgle's Rot, uh, Majos Purple and what I'm using here is a rust wash from Vallejo and I'm putting that rust wash on all the swords to give another um, level of dirty effect. Now I'm taking the Majos purple and I'm just using this on the Nurglings across all the models and only in uh, the real recessed deep areas. I don't want the Nurgles to look um, as dirty as the rest of the army because they are you know, a bit demonic so I'm using this Majos purple to make a different contrast from the flesh on the marines that's kind of has a base of humanity whereas these guys don't so nice little purple bit. And then Nurgles rot this is what a fabulous paint this uh, putting that to all the splits in the skin in the Nurglings, but also putting it on all the areas we painted yellow um, in the earlier stage. So all the pustules, all the gaps in the armour, all those blood areas, we do them with Nurgle rot, Nurgle's rot, and it goes on the bases. And that's the squad done. I think it's effective. I've really enjoyed this painting scheme. Looking forward to painting the rest of the army. Hope you've liked it. Um, any questions, any comments, anything like that, smack it in the comments down below. Uh, hopefully hit the subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope I'll see you again on the next painting video.